core values. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Really excited about it. Before we talk too much about brand-led learning, let's just talk about brands. And I think, I think if we, if we all consider what are some of today's top brands, and feel free to throw something down into chat. Megan, you know, first word association, what's your top brand that's out um, there in the world? This will tell you something about my junkiness. Uh, Starbucks a coffee, I would say, is one of the big brands that comes to mind immediately for me. Starbucks is a great brand today. Um, you've got uh, Apple is another great brand. And um, McDonald's, Virgin, Nike. I mean, there's a lot of brand resonance in these, these companies out there that extend far beyond the product. We can just see the swoosh and we think Nike and we, we say, just do it, man. What makes these brands so great? And I think, uh, you know, whether or not you think McDonald's is great or Starbucks is great, you know, personal opinion that these, these brands really do stand out there. And why is that? What makes what makes a brand compelling and 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 hold something? Be, it's, and it's more than just the logo, isn't it? It's not just about putting a logo out there. There's something that these brands stand behind. People are really rabid about their passion for their brands, right? And that's really what the best brands do is they create desire. Uh, you know, I have a Mac. I love my Mac, and I'm only a recent Mac convert. But there are people who are, you know, fanboys, fangirls of Macs and have been for years, and they are very passionate about their products, what the company stands for. If you're a Starbucks fan, you know, you, you're passionate about the fact that you can go find that quality of latte wherever you go. People stand behind their brands. We, we are loyal to them, and we have desire for the things that they do. We want to we want to kind of be the brand. Be the brand, Danny. <laughs> and, it, and it turns out that uh, for some organizations, the brand is, is the most valuable piece. It's that intangible asset that that is more important than anything else in that business. I love this quote from John Stewart. Now, if the business were split up, I would give you the land and the bricks and the mortar, but I want the brand. Um, I want to take that away because that's where the real value is. So we've got a quick poll, and Nick, if you can if you can pull the poll over. Okay, it looks like the poll. About, oh. Great. So thinking about your own learning experiences, uh, I'm not seeing the poll, so I'm going to trust that it's there. Does the learning it experience you created a great embody your brand values? Are you doing this already? It looks like 62% um, are in option B, not really. They're just putting their logo in the top corner. Um, but, you know, 25% are saying absolutely. You know, their learning program reflects their brand. Well, good for you all. Um, I think that's great, actually. That's a really good trend to see that people are already doing this. And I'd love to talk more. Let's connect and find out how you're, how you're reflecting that brand in your learning program. And for those of you who are just putting your logo in the top corner, we'll talk a little bit more about what we can do today so that, it, so that we're extending the, the brand beyond that. Because brand-led learning is more than putting the logo in the top right corner of the e-learning program. Brand-led learning means that we're connecting with your organization's values. Uh, let's say you work for Nike, right? The, the, the brand values of Nike, just do it, and, and there's probably way more behind it. But, but how do you kind of infuse that passion and that identity into the learning products that you are creating? Because it's more, um, and I think, I think Megan, you've got some good insight into this, you know, our, our brand means who we are as a company and what we stand for. And if we fail to extend that into the learning experience, you know, this is really an opportunity to connect to, the, to that passion at all points of, a, of a, an employee's experience with your organization. So imagine I am coming into a learning experience and, and it falls flat. It's just that PowerPoint with the logo in the top right corner of the, of the screen. It's the pool covered with algae. <laughs> you know, this is what people see when they come to your learning program. It doesn't feel like anyone has really cared about this learning program in a way, um, to one level. And it also has this big disconnect between who you are and what you stand for. So can we infuse that passion? And, and learning and training opportunities are one place to, to do that, and to, to kind of re-infuse that passion into our employees. 
So, so Megan has been reading this book, and I'm really excited to read it because you've got me, you've got me all hot on it. Tell us about Daniel Pink's <laughs> view yeah, on selling. I was going to say, can you, can we do you mind? I think right now we're just seeing poll. Can you? Um, we missed the brand led that slide and the, like the Daniel Pink slide. So can you forward make two slides? For I think um, Nick, you need to close the poll down then. Sorry oh, okay. About that. Sorry about that. That technology, I always love technology. That's what we're in the market. So uh, yes, um, one of the things that Daniel Pink, I've told, you know, Cami, I love this book. And one of the points that he makes is everyone sells. And then in today's work environment, he tells us that we're devoting maybe upwards of 40% of our time moving others. And that's definitely true in the work that you do. So if you do not yet have your summertime reading um, list filled, put this in here. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about in, for today's meeting or for today's conversation which is com was his concept of attunement. And what he defines that as is really bringing yourself, or in this case your learning, in harmony with, individ with the individuals that you're reaching, the context, and the groups, which I really define as your brand. You want to get everything in harmony here and remember that you're selling that brand and you're learning to many people and they've got many different networks of people who are trying to sell to them. So it's really key that, that bringing that brand into what you're doing. Mm. Well, and I think uh, moving others, I think, as the subtitle is, is an intriguing title, right? That's really how we are persuading Absolutely. people. And yes. that's what persuasion is. We are moving them to action. We're moving them to change their behavior. We're moving them to different attitudes. We are moving them to um, different skills, uh, different levels of development. So um, absolutely, it, it sounds like it's a really compelling book, and I'm gonna I'm gonna certainly add it to my reading list for this summer. <laughs> <laughs> so hello, I am your brand. Uh, a core part of, of, of being able to do brand learning is really understanding what your organization's brand represents. And when I say your organization's brand, I'm not talking about the L&D department's brand. I mean your company, the bigger picture. Who are you? What do you stand for? Uh, you know, is, your, is your stated mission out there to delight customers, uh, to, to, to um, deliver you know, exceptional products, to uh, in, you know, whatever whatever your stated mission is that out there is that getting reflected at all levels of the organization? Because if your e-learning programs are not delighting your internal customers, you are missing out, right? You're not executing that brand vision, and and brand is not just a customer facing thing, uh, not an external customer facing thing. We need to be thinking about our internal customers, and those are your employees because they have lots of places that they can go work for. They can, uh, you know depending on the economy, right? But, but they, they have choices out there, and you kind of need to sell who you are to these people internally as well. So how can you find out who your brand is? First step is close your eyes and you know immerse yourself. Just imagine, who are you? What does this brand represent? Who are we? Uh, find out who you are and what you stand for. And we'll talk a few ways about doing that. And, you know, it's been fun putting this webinar together because it's really gotten me connecting back to the Kineo brand, for example. You know, we we are, uh, you know, our word, the name of the company Kineo is to stir things up, to change, to drive. You know, it's energetic. We we want to be fresh and sassy. We want to deliver e-learning in a new way to the marketplace. And are we living that brand identity at all levels of who we are? And that's really important to me as somebody who works at this company that we, you know, I came to Kineo because of this brand. I want to live this brand and I want to make sure that we're out there uh, sharing that with the world. And I think that's, you know, I'm immersed in it. So how can you get immersed in your own brand identity and what you stand for? So first things off, I say, Absolutely, go out and see what the customers think of your brand. What do they see? If you Google, if you Google your company name, what do you find? And you might go out and look at the corporate website. You might look at your uh, uh, annual reports. What is the CEO saying? You might go check what Twitter. What are people saying on Twitter about your brand? Assuming that you have, you know, a brand that's so big that people are talking about it. Um, what are people saying about your brand? How do customers view it? That's really important because that's that's that external identity, and um, 
it could be that there's a little disconnect, right? You know, it could be that people are actually out there saying that your coffee is the worst coffee in the world when what you're trying to sell is the best coffee in the world. So there might be a little disconnect there. That, that's a bigger issue than brand led e learning. Uh, the second step is find out what marketing has to say about your brand. What do they say the brand stands for? And they might have, you know, if, they, if there's that disconnect between what customers are seeing of the brand and what marketing is put forth, obviously there's a bigger problem. But marketing has some idea of who you are and what those values are and what they're trying to communicate out to their to, to, to customers and consumers. And so learn from that. That's, that's a big big piece. And also think about how you can partner with marketing as part of your e-learning initiative. That's a real mess for a lot of organizations. Is marketing dollars feel like they're very separate from learning dollars. And we should be, you know, kind of cozying up to the marketing teams a lot more than, than perhaps we have been. Because they have this understanding of who the marketplace really is. And thinking about how we express that vision out to our customers. And what, as part of the learning team, we're, we're, we're taking that inward, right? We want to express that vision to those internal customers. So see how they can help you inform your vision and your identity. And that's a big piece of it. Poll, another poll here, Nick, and we'll make sure that we turn it, we, we turn it off in time. So just understanding who is currently working with your marketing team as you develop learning strategy and design. Are you, you know, yeah, we get logos and fonts. Um, or we do more than that, we actually really partner with our marketing team, or no, I never even thought to do this, but what a great idea, Cammie. That's an option as well. So take a few moments here to enter into the poll, and Nick, just, if you could share the results with me. Hi, Cammie. We've got this great wall between marketing and the rest of the web. Yeah? It looks like the results are in, and, and there's a, a tie with, with both yeses at 35%. Um, but then 30% um, actually never never thought to do it and, and thought it was a great idea. Well, good. So we have, some, we have some opportunity to work here. And I think there might be some bridges to build. There might be some hurdles to overcome with this, because marketing might perceive themselves as having a very different value to the organization and it's more customer external focus. So how, how can you partner with them and find some ways to build those bridges? So Nick, have you closed the poll? Just close that yes, poll the and I'll move poll on. Is closed. Excellent. So the next thing to do is, you know, you've kind of looked at all the marketing materials, you've looked at what people how people perceive your brand externally. But now let's look at how people behave within your organization. That will give you some sense of who you are. Uh, you know, that's, that's really understanding the culture of your organization. And, and brand, uh, your brand identity hopefully is infused within that culture. So what's the style? How do people work together? How do they relate to each other? What's their attitude about getting work done? And does that reflect that true brand identity? Um, it could be that there's a real opportunity that you identify as you see that. Maybe there's a disconnect. Maybe your brand is out there saying one thing, and people are behaving the exact opposite way. So there's a real opportunity for the learning organization to help people live that brand more. Um, you know, you might kind of start infusing that message in very different ways and slowly starting to change culture. And that's not just your job as the learning team. That obviously. That, that's going to involve a lot of people uh, at, at the organization level. But, but, but pay attention. How are people behaving? What's your organizational style? And that will help you see how the brand is being lived within the company. And then go out and ask them what do employees have to say. How do they see the brand? How do they see? Uh, do they see a difference on the external versus the internal? How do they? How do they live the brand? How do they express it? So you might want to do surveys. You might want to walk the halls and just talk to people. Get a sense for it. You probably know yourself if, if you know how, how your brand is, how your brand affects you and impacts you. And I think, you know, for me, um, my personal story, you know, the Kenya brand does affect what I do. That sounds that doesn't sound positive, but it, but but I mean that in a very positive way. You know, it's is the way that I'm acting, the way that I'm speaking. Do I reflect Kenya brand? And does Kenya does the Kenya brand reflect me? 
Uh, I think that's really important uh, for those of us w working within companies is to, is to have that kind of identity. So now take a step back and go out and look at your learning programs that you've been designing. Uh, you might want to, I don't know if anyone remembers the Pepsi challenge, right? So all these cans of generic soda were placed before people, well, they were all masked. So you didn't know what they were, and people had to pick which one they liked the best. And I think it was Coke, and it was Pepsi, and it was something else. Um, voila, people could figure out which one was Pepsi just by the taste. Um, or maybe they thought they liked Coke better, and it turns out they liked Pepsi. But the point of the Pepsi challenge here is to mask your learning and to, to, to mask those programs and see if they represent the brand. Hide the logo. Could you tell if this was your work? Could you tell if, if your organization created this. Does this feel like it belongs to the company that you know whose brand you just immersed yourself in? Is there a connection? Do they tie in together? Do they live and breathe together? And if your learning passes that Pepsi challenge, you know, fabulous, then you're doing something right and, and you should run a webinar on how to do that. And if it doesn't pass the Pepsi challenge, well there's some things that you can do to, to start infusing that brand identity a little bit more. Another key place to look is your new hire training program. And think about this. A new, a new employee comes into your company, and the first thing they experience about you typically is new hire training. That is the perfect opportunity to explode your brand identity all over them in a really positive way. You want to infuse them from day one. You want them to feel like they're a part of an organization and have a really powerful connection to it. They, they came to work for you for a reason and help them feel like what they're going to be doing makes a difference. So, so this is for a bank. Um, this is their new hire training program. And what I really love about it, I mean, just the messaging. Our customers are at the heart of everything we do. And they're putting their values out there in a way to connect that new employee right from the get-go. The look and feel of this is right on target with their brand identity from a visual standpoint. So it's not just a sparse PowerPoint with a logo slapped in the corner. We've really kind of um, woven this brand identity through in many different ways. And it's, you know, it's about the look and feel. It's about the tone, the way you write. It's about the messaging behind it. Megan, you have some statistics around around the new hire training that would be great for you to share right now. Because I think, I think just showing how that, that first touch points really do make a difference, don't they? Absolutely, and I and um, I think one of the things is just really winning hearts. And you know, it's mentioned here where they say our customers at the heart of everything we do. And and in e-learning, thinking about your new employees, they are definitely your customers. And you and your objective here is winning their hearts and minds. Um, too many times, like um, one of the statistics is over 40 percent of your new hires. Um, are, it's a make and break time for them in onboarding. The first 90 days are critical. And so for you to make that first impression is a big deal. And just wanted to make a quick plug. I know we've, um, Nick mentioned we're having um, a series of webinars, and we're going to be talking completely about the, you know, how e-learning really is shining in global onboarding. That's going to be um, Thursday, August 29th, basically talking about onboarding going global. And we'd love to have you join us for that. But really, the, the whole point here is onboarding is really a critical time and a great place to have your brand show up and and you you know you make a good impression with those new, new employees about just who you are and what it means and what you mean and why it's important that they're here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so start start them off on the right foot. Absolutely. And get and get that brand into their bloodstream as early as you can. And to take a stab yourself, you know, if you've got a piece of paper next to you and a pencil or uh, Perhaps you have a computer in front of you and you want to type this down. But think about what your company's brand values are. And write them down right now. Just, do you have a sense of what they are? Do you, do you know who you are and what it is that you want to, what you want to infuse into your employee base? Is it quality products? Is it great customer service? Is it um, sassy attitude? What is it that you represent? What are your core brand values? And I've seen, it's sort of interesting, I've um, been doing some work actually with marketing departments at other organizations, actually creating e-learning for their marketing departments. 
And there's a lot of tools out there that the marketing teams use that we can be learning from as learning designers. And I, I encourage you to go Google the term brand wheel. And there are these tools out there, it's just, they're kind of grids and charts that you fill in your own brand identity and your own values, who you stand for, how customers see you. And that might be a really useful exercise for you to do internally, thinking about the company brand, not just the learning department brand, but thinking about the overall organization's brand. So if you have a good sense of what your brand values are, then, then you're halfway there. Well, maybe you're partway there. Um, and, it, and if not, this might be an exercise you want to pull more people into your organization into this conversation. All right, so now what? Um, how can you do brand love learning? How can you do it? Is it as easy as we say it is? And it is, it really is about getting into the bloodstream. And I've made that comment a few times today. It's, it's more than the visuals. It's more than a logo in the top right corner. It's more, more than a pretty picture. Brand learned learning really needs to go all the way through the learning experience at all levels. And we'll, we'll talk about what that means as we, as we go through. And, and, and as a designer, you want that brand to influence every aspect of your design. So how, how the program looks, how you emotionally engage with people are, um, how, how, what's the user interface like? Is it a very exploratory user interface? Does that kind of represent who you are as a company? Are you giving people a lot of autonomy because that's who you are as a company? How do you talk to the people in, that, that are taking your e-learning programs? What's the tone of voice that you use? How do you write your content in a way that, that reinforces that brand and captures the hearts and minds in a way that really is meaningful? What's the, the messaging style, you know, back on that uh, onboarding example that we showed, you know, they're talking about how customers are at the heart of the business. So how are you weaving that message through your content at all layers? Even if it's a course, even if it's a compliant training course, you have an opportunity. Even if it's something about sexual harassment, brand belongs in all of these places. It's not just, it's not just about creating a course about brand, it's about infusing brand everywhere. So think about how you can let the brand influence every aspect of the design that you're working on. And of course, first impressions do matter. So even though I say it's not just about visual identity and the logo, it really is about the way it looks for many reasons. And one is people just feel like, hey, people seem to care to make something that looks this good because they really care about our company. And that's important. And the truth is we respond to things that are beautiful. We respond better to things that uh, have a strong visual mm, pull to them. And looks do matter. It's not just a superficial thing, but it's about more than throwing that logo up into the top right corner. And so I'll show you a few examples right now. For This is for Timberland. This is an e-learning program. It looks an awful lot like a customer-facing marketing site, doesn't it? So it's got this richness to it. It feels like the product. I mean, I, you know, makes me want to go buy some boots. <laughs> um, you know, I think it really just from the tone, the palette, the even the transparency with the graph showing through, this feels like a company that cares about the earth. This feels like a company that cares about its product, about making a difference. I, I, I think you feel that at all levels of, of something like this. Even just on the, and um, how the content is written. So it's, it's short, it's direct, it's not a lot of text, it's not heavy on that. Um, trying to connect with people at all levels. Here's another look and feel. Here's that famous swoosh, right? Um, this e-learning could have looked very different. It could have been a white screen with text on it and a logo in the top right corner, but instead, there's that feeling of connection to the overall brand identity that really looks a lot like Nike's website. Uh, you, you, you see the, the sports theme in the background. At all levels, you're kind of connecting back to who this organization is. And even in the writing style here, um, Olympic gold medalist is a gotta have for the California Invitational Track scene. It's not formal stiff writing. It's writing the way that people talk to each other. 
and, and is writing in the way that people within this organization are likely to talk to each other. You need to know how people communicate, how, how, how people behave, um, back to those questions we were asking earlier. And even here, just the, the way this is phrased, what do you already know? Uh, it, it's not formal. Um, and I think that's a key piece of it, too. And often in e-learning, the writing style tends to lead, lend more to a very instructional focused <laughs> writing style. At the end of this e-learning program, you will, you will have you know blah, 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 blah. And it's very boring and droning. Um, that alienates people. <laughs> we want to find a way to write in a tone that's going to connect them into program, engage them, persuade them, all of those things. We're selling all the time. We want to sell you to stay with this program. This is a program we built for Firefox in um, our ADAPT framework, which uh, scales up and down depending on whatever device you're looking at. So it can appear on a phone or it can appear on a large desktop. This looks this e-learning. This is a landing page for sales training or for sales associates who actually don't work for Firefox. They're out working in retail markets, and they work for a store or they're independent. But what Firefox is trying to do is sell those sales associates on their products so that they will sell their phones to their customers. So they want to create a, a branded experience that represents their product in a really positive light to the universe to all those salespeople. So you have an opportunity, if you're doing customer-facing training, to really use it as a marketing opportunity as well. And if it's just a, you know, a kind of a bland document with white on, you know, white backgrounds and black text, you're missing an opportunity to connect with those with those people as well because you're selling them on your product. And so here's a content stream where it's still got that same rich look and feel. It's the, it's the font that their marketing team uses. And we worked with their marketing team to get this look and feel right. So think about ways that you can extend that brand all throughout. Even here, this is a program for UNICEF. And within, UNICEF had almost a sub-identity for this cholera toolkit, which was a, a packet of resources and information that they get out to their partners and resources in the field who are trying to prevent and respond to cholera outbreaks. And so we created marketing, well, not marketing, we cre created a learning program that matched to the marketing that went with it. So it really felt like it was a piece of this larger package around the cholera toolkit. You're right, Kim. I mean, sure. that's, this is a great example of like marketing collaboration with the e-learning team. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, Here's another example. So this is a large entertainment company, right? And they had, this is a compliance training course. So here, so let's just talk a little bit about that because I think that is quite remarkable. Compliance training. These are the lawyers. And they wanted something that was really going to connect with their, their employees. Because why? Because they wanted to change behavior. They really believed uh, that by connecting with them in this more meaningful way, that having a, a program that, that felt like the company, that connected into who they are as an entertainment company, was going to have better results. And I'll, I'm going to show you this as a more detailed case study in a few minutes, because it, it did. It really did have better results because of that. And so they happened to own DC Comics, as you can see here by the logo. And they had DC Comics do the artwork for, for a lot of this. And we built it into an e-learning interface. And so that brand personality comes across just on the main menu. This is who they are. They live and breathe this at all levels. And people sit up and they actually pay attention to things like this. And it's kind of what we do. I've been talking about this a little bit. It's clearly on my mind. It's, it's, it's turning the mirror on ourselves and kidding out, you know, what's our style? And we try to, we've got lots of ways that we express this. We have five tips for how we write our content. And if you've ever if you've ever ever been on a webinar with me and I talk about writing, I, I share some of those. It's it, to make it conversational, make it adult, um, make it a little fresh and sassy if you can. Keep it short, keep it light. There's a lightness to to our style, and we've always got to kind of look at our content and make sure, hey, is this following Kineo's style? Is this on brand? And we have had clients who have turned that into a verb. <laughs> And they say, you know, we've got to make sure that we're, you know, we're going to do a kineo on this because they want to try and make it that fresh, 
style. And, and you know, think about it, if, if your brand name becomes a verb in people's mind, you, you really you really hit some kind of point, right? So Hoover, think of all the brands that have become, I mean, Google, I'm going to Google that, right? That's, that is a brand has taken on a greater meaning and, and truly succeeded in some ways. So thinking about your own style and how that gets infused into everything that you do, and, and you can look at a screen and see if it passes the test for, for, your, for your organization's style. Now, a big thing that people forget is their LMS. Your LMS is your front door to your learning system. A uh, great opportunity to either completely underwhelm people <laughs> with these text, kind of ugly text screens with lots of links on them and maybe a logo in the top right corner if your LMS vendor lets you do that. Uh, you can do some very simple theming often. We've been work, if you know Kineo, you know that we've done a lot of work in Moodle and Totra, which are open source learning management systems, and, and we have the flexibility with solutions like these to make them look like anything. And your learning management, this is in fact a learning management system, looks like the brand. It doesn't look like the, your standard LMS. So here for Paul Mitchell, they're really rich visuals, enhancing their products, pulling you in, trying to connect with that audience, because the people who work at Paul Mitchell really are the brand. Um, think about hairstylists and, and people in that industry. They're going to feel like they're at home in a place like this and feel like somebody really is paying attention to our content and our training programs, and, and this stuff matters. So I'm going to pause for a moment. Megan, anything, any insights, any great um, commentary to add? And Nick, if there are any questions that have come through while I take a breath and have a drink of water. Oh, certainly. I was going to say, just in looking at those two, um, the Paul Mitchell and also the Teens, um, is it Teens for America? Do you mind going back to that slide? I mean, I really think that that one, you know, if you're looking at the fact that these are teenagers and that they can just jump in to, the, like, you know, is, um, you know, they've got celebrities in here. They've got, um, you know, like different things like, you know, Team Player, Hand Solo, Water Baby. I mean, they really they spent some time and energy creating that look and feel of, you know, a brand that's engaging to that end user, which was definitely, you know, Teams for Health, like getting them involved in, like, how do you get involved? How do you get fit? And that by, you know, again, they're on a computer, but, like, just educate me about well, how good it is to, you know, get 10 minutes of exercise or whatever their point is. And I think the thing that I really like, too, about this is that they, they tend to, like, you know, change that, um, that front page and keep it current, but still reflecting their brand. So I thought, you know, yeah. both of these were great examples of uh, front doors that, you know, engage and bring people inside. And as instructional designers, if you bring up a really good point, instructional designers, you know, our aim, we're supposed to be out there understanding who our audience is, right? And right. Uh, um, this, I think, this Teens for Health really shows that you know who your audience is here. And mm -hmm. the language is, is, is geared towards that audience. So there might be a little sub-branding that you do within it, depending on, on who, who, who you're trying to reach. But you need to know, you know, Paul Mitchell, I was talking about, you, that you know your audience, their hairstylist. So the, that brand, the brand identity, it really is about knowing your audience. Marketing is really good at that. People in marketing know how to do that very well, and that's another reason why you know, it might be useful for you to create some alliances with your marketing team. So let's take a look. We're going to step back a little bit and talk about what it means to create a brand-led learning campaign. Now, Back in the old days, we would create an e-learning program <laughs> that was 60 minutes long, two hours long, and you know, 30 minutes long. And it was a single event. People would log on to the LMS, complete it, pass the quiz, and the box is checked, checked off. And um, voila, they have learned something, right? Uh, we know that, that that's not really how people learn. Uh, ultimately, that's not the most effective way to persuade them. 
and to change behavior. And instead, we want to start thinking about creating campaigns. And this is really an opportunity to, to learn from marketing and build some of the tools that marketing uses into how we, how we deliver our, our learning programs. And so think about this for a moment. Does anyone remember the PSA, the Public Service Announcement? If you're in, if you're in the United States, uh, I realize these are, these are a little US-centric, and you are uh, probably in your 40s, like I am. <laughs> you might recognize some of these. Um, so there's Smokey the Bear. There's the uh, the 1980s. You know, this is your drug. This is your brain. This is brain your brain drug. drug. Yes. Do we all remember the frying, yeah. the frying egg? Yeah. Question. Um, the crying Indian. Uh, the crying Indian change actually did change how people behaved in terms of litter, right? We, we stopped littering in the 70s, and this is a big piece of it. Uh, the, the drug PSAs, your brain on drugs, there, there are PSAs about smoking and cigarettes. Today we see them about texting and driving. You know, you might see this really powerful commercial or billboard showing someone, you know, smashed up in, in a horrible wreck because they were texting. And, and these these things, what the PSA does really well is a really short snippet. It could be a poster. It could be a short uh, two-minute, 14-minute, or not 14-minute, 14 um, 14-second, 14 as in the case, you know, of the, this is your brain on drugs. Just these really short spots. But what they do is they extend this campaign over time. So you get saturated with these messages. Not, they get bombarded, isn't the quite, quite the exact word, but over time is this sustained campaign, these messages keep coming back to you, and they slowly start to sink in, and they slowly start to change our behavior. And ultimately, you see results from, from these kinds of campaigns. And uh, like I was saying about litter and pollution and drugs, I mean, cigarettes, this, this stuff really does change behavior. So can we learn something from the PSA, and how can we apply that to our learning program? And a Bit of the, we could take a little bit of a lesson from content marketing. So content marketing is uh, kind of a new, in my world it's relatively new, it's kind of a new buzzword, and you, you see it a lot in organizations who are not just putting out commercials about their products, not just saying, hey, buy my shoes, but they're putting a lot of value around that marketing material. So they might be creating communities, you know, maybe it's a shoe company, Instead of just selling shoes, they're also at creating communities around those shoes, running clubs, and sharing tips, and sending out, um, you know, stretching. I have a, a running app that I use, and I get, I do get uh, junk mail from it, but often it will be like, hey, five tips for better stretching after you run. And you know what? I go off and I read that stuff, <laughs> and it's creating value and loyalty in me because I'm seeing that they're helping me beyond just the product itself. And so content mar marketing is a way to keep building this relationship with a customer in a valuable way. And um, well, here, here are the three bullets. Look, this is the most bulleted, bulleted screen I have in this whole presentation. So it's creating and distributing relevant and valuable content. And how can we do that beyond just you know, selling your shoes? So marketing is learning how to do this. And I think from a learning standpoint, we can find ways to, to learn from content marketing. And so three lessons from content marketing are they create a campaign for change, they design for engagement, and they embed results. Does that sound familiar? At least the last two bits, you know, as learning designers traditionally, we're trying to, trying to get results. You know, we, we're always trying to engage our learners, right? That's kind of what everyone says. We need to engage people. Uh, but creating this campaign, this sustained campaign over time, really will start to help change behavior. And it's a different mindset than this event-based learning that we might have been doing all these years. So what is it that those marketeers do really well? And it turns out that mar marketeers is the word. That's what they call themselves. Um, sounds like mouseketeers to me. But marketeers, what are they trying to do? Well, they're trying to turn those prospects into fans, right? They want to create that, that desire, that rabid passion. They use a wide range of channels. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's not just TV ads. It's TV, radio, it's uh, Facebook, it's Twitter, it's email blasts, it's billboards. They're finding lots of different ways to get the message out. And they know that not one message, that only one channel 
only one channel is not going to not going to cut it. And you can't expect one channel to hit all of the people all of the time. So you find lots of different channels. And over time, through that constant exposure, people might find, they might get the message in different ways. And it's this sustained campaign that creates measurable results. So instead of thinking about one single learning event, you might actually plan a learning campaign over, let's say, a year's long time period. And it's a very different way of thinking if you've been used to creating just a, you know, oh, I just have to create a 30-minute e-learning program and call it done. So it's all about persuasion, right? We want to get out there and, and change those hearts and minds, pull people in. So let's look at an example right now of a change campaign at one organization. This is an entertainment company that I was telling you about earlier. And this is a compliance-driven e-learning program. Well, wasn't an e-learning program. I should amend myself there. So it was a truly a, a learning campaign. It was a public service announcement. It was a, a sustained over time to change awareness of behavior. And in the day of information security, it was all about creating awareness for people about how to keep data secure. You know, not to take pictures of stars on the movie lot and post those for all the world to see. Um, they wanted to do it in a way that got results, that kept people's attention, that wasn't boring. They wanted it to feel like their organization because they knew that that really mattered. And they also knew that one off, what, what I mean, one off wasn't going to stick. What does that mean? It means they knew that if they just put out a 30-minute e-learning program, that that was not going to change behavior. They needed to find ways to create repetition and reinforcement over time because that's really how we learn. That's how we're going to change behaviors through that sustained multiple touch points over a long period of time. So this is kind of what they did. They created this campaign for change and, and thinking about that content, content marketing, the three strategies of content marketing. This is the first one, campaign for change. So they started off with these short video promos. And you might say, oh, we can't do this. We're not an entertainment company. We don't have the budget. You can. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed and think that this is out of your reach because this is all stuff that people can do. It might not be quite as slick as what they did, but I think you can achieve similar results. So what they did, they started off with this video, these short videos of these two characters, Barkley and Fist, who were uh, information security guys at the company. And they're going to make the greatest movie ever made about information security. And so they had these short video spots that started to create some awareness of information security of what you can and can't post on social media. And they were two to three minute videos. They created three of these. And that was their first initial push. They created posters that they posted on their movie lot. Um, and because it's a movie, they can actually make reference to their other movies without fear of um, reprisal and copyright suits. They got permission for all of that, right? So, so a lot of their movies, look, they were making jokes about, about their other movies, but they had these posters all around. They had chocolates that were coded with QR codes on the back. And they were handing those out. And if you scanned the QR code, it would take you to a video promotion. They took over the cafeteria one day and themed the menu. So everything was about data security and information security. They had competitions, tip sheets. I mean, they just created this campaign that went over time. And it also included e-learning, of course. So they had some, not of course, but um, that's where we fit into the picture, is they had, they created um, a series of short but focused e-learning modules that kind of taught the hows and the, uh, you know, a little bit deeper dive into what steps you should take, how you should do it. and and. That supported the campaign and was in turn supported by it. So people were driven to these e-learning programs by QR coded chocolates and things like that. But once they're in it, they were fun, they were engaging, we told stories. Uh, it was all written to the tone of the company too. And I, I'm not sure how I've emphasized that, that as much as I as I should, you know, so much of it's in the writing and making sure that you're 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 sharing that same language as your employees and you're on brand with how you're expressing your ideas and your thoughts to them. So we had uh, using fairly simple e-learning templates, but it was all about the story and they had to be detectives and they had to learn how to be superheroes. So engaging them for change and finally embedding results. So this is about keeping the learning going beyond this specific event. They had 
data decoder wheels that they share, tip sheet certificates, and then they just keep the messages coming. So they're sustaining it over time. They are changing behaviors, like the PSA, right? So this has been going on for a year and a half, and the truth is that they are getting results, and that's what really matters to this organization. So they found that people are reaching out you know, to find out, hey, is this email something I should open or not? And that's a win for them because it means that people are paying attention. People are, people are starting to police their own emails. The chief privacy officer is getting more requests. And you think, oh, no, more work. But that means they've succeeded. It means people are looking out and trying to get the kind of help that they need. And, um, and what's more compelling than anything is that this is compliance training. <laughs> so this is mandated for all employees. And they made it interesting. They made it engaging. They really wanted to try and connect with people in a very different way. So there she is. That was Dr. Zilla Zombot. She's the arch villain of Barclay and Fisk. And uh, she she lives in a compliance training program. I think it's really it's really compelling. An award winning, wasn't it? Wasn't it? It was award-winning, Granton Hall award-winning. We're very proud of that one. Yeah, that's really cool. So we're going to, I know that there's some questions coming through. I'm going to do a quick, um, in a nutshell, wrap-up, and then we'll have time for a few questions, unless there's something really burning right now. Or Megan, if you have anything to add. No, forward on. Forward on. So in a nutshell, this is some of what we've talked about today, I might throw in a few bonus bonus walnuts here as we as we wrap up things. So immerse yourself in your brand. Uh, understand it, live it, breathe it, represent it. Make sure that your e-learning represents that as well. And don't just stop at the visual identity in your e-learning programs. Extend that brand through all levels of your learning. And it's not just about coming up with the L&D team's brand. And I've seen organizations who do this. They have these internal brand building exercises. And it's all about knowing who the L&D team is and having an L&D team logo. And the, you know, the marketing university logo for, the university logo for our division. And that's important, but only if that is really an extension of your overall corporate brand. They need to be, um, you can't see my hands, but I'm lacing my fingers together. That brand needs to be a, your L&D team brand needs to be an extension of the overall corporate brand. So, so don't just create this new little thing. Make sure that it's a piece of, you know, a chip off the old block, so to say. And that it's not just about visual identity. It's, it's understanding tone, writing, messaging, content, how you're engaging with people, how you're following up with them, how you are living and representing who you are. You know, if one of your pieces is to um, stay connected with your customers, if that's a core brand value for you, how are you doing that in your e-learning programs with your internal customers? Are you staying connected to them? Are you finding opportunities for them to follow up and um, connect with people and subject matter experts and each other and collaborate? So find ways that are beyond just the visuals. And stay the course. You might, you might have some pushback on some of this. The marketing team might say, hey, that's our territory. <laughs> uh, find ways to ally with them. Um, stay the course. Keep, keep moving forward. And you might have to start slowly. There might be some incremental changes that you can make. But be strong. Get feedback. So put things out there. Find, test your market. Marketing, the marketing teams do this really well. This is something that we can learn, we can learn from. So uh, you know, maybe your stakeholders want you to do their content in a certain way because they think they think it's more serious if you do it this way, and therefore people will take it more seriously. And you might present it that way, but you might also try a more brand-led approach and see if you can make it more accessible, and then test the market to see what people prefer. And if you can show your stakeholders results, and you can say, actually, kind of like with that compliance example, the Barclays and Fisk example I showed you. I mean, they actually had data coming back. People were taking that e-learning more than any e-learning within the organization ever. Um, so it kind of broke records internally as well. That's the kind of stuff that will make your stakeholders sit up and notice and pay attention. And then finally, build that brand-led learning campaign. So find those ways just to 
sustain over time, create sustained engagement. Think about the PSA. Find lots of different channels to get your message out. Know that all of those channels are not going to meet all of your employees' needs, or you know, every employee might not see every single channel, and that's okay. It's kind of not to say that it's a scattergun approach or scattershot approach, but the more ways you can find people to engage with this message, I think the more likelihood you're going to have to ultimately change behavior over time. All right, do we want to do this last poll? Sure. Or do we want to do questions? Oh. We'll do both. Okay. So Nick, you want to pull that poll over? <laughs> All right, I've got the poll going. What do you think? Are right you now. ready to roll with brand mud e learning? Excellent. Very good. So, no way. <laughs> yes, we've got work to do, and we're already doing this, so I'm feeling pretty sassy right now. I'll let the poll go. Sassy folks are out there. <laughs> I'll let the poll go. One is. Oh, go ahead, Nick. I'm talking over you. I was just going to say, I'll let the poll go another 10 seconds. I'll close it out, and I'll share the results um, very shortly here. And I was just going to say, Karen, I'm looking forward to seeing how, people are, how many people are sassy out there right now. <laughs> Looks like from the yeah. looks of it, 16% are feeling sassy. Um, you know, 79% 70, <laughs> um, they, they are, but they've got a little work to do, and then 5% um, don't know what their company brand and values are. And I will and close the poll. there's probably a few. Yeah, there's probably a few other options too. I kind of force you to pick one, don't I? <laughs> so, uh, so we're all. Some of you are feeling sassy. The rest of you will get you to feeling sassy, assuming that that's what your brand is, right? Assuming your brand is sassy. Um, so great. Well, this has been been really fun, um, and I hope you've gotten some value out of it, and are really excited to go out and see what you can do to take more of a brand-led approach in your own internal organization's e-learning. Uh, any questions? And Nick, I think you said that there were some, so happy to field questions. Okay. Um, the first question is, um, as an educator, I agree that engagement is fundamental to learning, but does brand-led learning also apply to longer, more complex learning programs? Uh, absolutely. Um, I think, and are you, it would be interesting to know the speaker, are you an educator from you know, that kind of, that campaign-led approach that we were just talking about, um, you know, the brand was, was coming through at all levels of that, so I think even in longer-term curriculums, I mean, it's, it's certainly you got to keep reinforcing that brand. So I would say it belongs everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah, she responded that she's a university teacher and that they do a lot of e-learning. Um, we do have one more question, if you have time for it. Absolutely. Which is um, keeping that brand thread going through the learning familiar to the employee should hopefully help the employee stay engaged. So is, is that a question? Yes, it's you know keeping the brand thread going through the learning, um, you know keeping it familiar to the employee. By, by keeping it familiar to the employee, should that hopefully help the employee stay more engaged? No. Um, yeah, I, I think I understand the question. Um, you know it's. Engagement. What is what does engagement mean? And I think it's I think that's a big bucket word that gets used a lot. Um, keeping people engaged. Is, we want them to pay attention. We want them to understand why this is of value to them. What's in it for me? Um, engagement is you know understanding what kind of value you're going to get out of a program, and then seeing that value uh, demonstrated in that program. So so brand led is one piece of it. I think there's lots of ways to keep people engaged. So I wouldn't say that if you, you know, if all you do is brand-led learning, you've engaged your learners, not necessarily. 
Um, it could also be that people don't really engage with your brand in the first place. <laughs> Kim, you know, one of the things that I was, when I heard that question that I kind of wanted to bring to you is just, just along the times of how many times do we need to see some, you know, to, to engage and like I was thinking about your exercise thing, you have to do it for a certain amount of time before it becomes a habit. So mm -hmm. I was wondering about, you know, if you, you know, keep your brand in throughout your programming, then people get very comfortable with it and what it means. And even though it might not be the main thing that you're learning or putting out there, that it's an underlying principle that people see throughout your learning. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a really good point. We, we were doing a program recently for um, a bank, a credit card company, and they were fabulous to work with because at every 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 course that we built for them, they have found some way to hook the content back into their core values, um, and that's a big piece of what your brand is. So some companies actually have a you know. A statement. These are our core brand values, and you know, it might be an acronym. It might be, you know, a phrase. And you know, for them, one of their core values is do the right thing. And we just kept, you know, we kept bringing that in. And it's not a, not to create boring repetition, but to, to reinforce that message and to, and to get it into people's bloodstream. Uh, so sustained campaign over time. And if you can find opportunities, even if it's the course on, you. Know, you know, some really dreadful, boring policy. Finding ways to connect back to, you know, why were you, why was this company put on earth? What are we trying to do? What is that brand value that we are leading with? And helping people see that at even those minor points uh, along the way are going to are going to help them understand that what's in it for me in a in a bigger way, and keep help you know help them live and breathe those values. Any other questions, Nick? Uh, we do have one more question, um, and then I think we can probably wrap it up. But the question is, what about using audio or compliance training? There's, in compliance training, there's a lot of text. Is it better to just let them read in chunks? Uh, that's a whole other big question. I mean, that's really, uh, you know, you can do a lot of text-based e-learning very effectively. Uh, I, I would avoid long strings of text on the screen if you can um, and it is all about chunking things for sure so you may or may not be able to use audio in your course due to whatever kinds of technical constraints you have and uh, there's yeah, that's probably a little beyond the scope of what we can talk about today but I think that it is a good question so Thank you all so much for coming today. I, we will have a recording of this session available, and Nick uh, will be able to follow up and, and send that out at some point to everyone who's attended. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Megan directly. Our emails are there. I am active on Twitter. You can find me there and, and make uh, liberal use of the Kinea website. We have a lot of great resources and tips up there. There is a uh, a brand-led learning guide. So if you want to read more about this and dig into that, please go check all that out and, and enjoy and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.